What's good guys, today I'm going to be ranking some custom flashlight brands and motors. Just a few disclaimers before I begin. First, this is 100% subjective, so please don't get butt hurt if you disagree with something that I say. And second, this is also totally unscripted, so I'm probably going to say a few things offhand that I probably shouldn't have said or just don't really actually mean. And I can't stress enough that this is mostly in good fun and these are just opinions. Anyways, if we get enough likes on today's video, I'll do one for mainstream flashlight brands as well. Okay, so starting off in D tier, we're going to have to go with Mui Shant. <laughs> Mui Shant has some of the worst marketing fluff and worst customer service that I've seen out of any custom flashlight brand. Yes, they have some very creative designs, but at the end of the day, I just can't support their business practices from an, from an ethical standpoint. Next at D tier is going to actually be Barrel Flashlight. Now, I'm sure this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I think that their flashlights don't offer anything functionally. Barrel doesn't even market towards the custom flashlight crowd so much as they do the Instagram bling market. And that's exactly what their flashlights are, just bling and jewelry. To top that off, I'm also not much of a fan of their business practices. They actively prohibit third-party accessories just because the accessory market is something that they can milk for cash with their flashlights. So yeah, harsh truths being spit here, but they had to be said. Next at D tier, and I think our final entry is going to be Sinner. I personally don't have anything against Sinner himself, he seems like a great guy. It's just that his flashlights are sort of lacking when it comes to build quality. They've definitely improved in recent years, I just don't think that it's conducive to the price that's being asked for his flashlights. Alright, so moving on to C tier. This is probably what I'd consider average, so there's going to be a lot more entries here. And it's probably going to be the majority of entries just because of how saturated I consider the market to be. Our first entry at C tier is going to be Deadwood Custom Works. Um, he has two flashlights, one called the Huckleberry, which is definitely nothing special, and his second one, the Tombstone. I like that he's trying to push the envelope a little bit in terms of design. However, at the end of the day, I don't think it's a design that's going to stick in the long run. Our next entry at C tier is going to be not a design. He has one flashlight called the Beam. It has very good design fundamentals, but at the end of the day, it's also hampered by a very recessed tail cap switch that I just don't understand. The next entry at C tier is going to be Reaver Arms. I believe he has one flashlight, it's called the Citadel. It does look very nice, but at the end of the day, it's nothing special, it's just running a Dragon Driver. Also at C tier is TNC. This is, this is a tough one to put at C tier. Once upon a time, I might have placed them at B tier or even A tier. But the fact of the matter is, is that their flashlights have really fallen behind the curve technology-wise. Another one that's hard to put at C tier for me is going to be Tane. Tane is an interesting maker. When you think of Tritium, he's one of the first makers that you think of. He definitely has some very pretty flashlights, but I think they are lacking somewhat in terms of build quality, and they've definitely fallen behind the curve quite a bit in terms of function as well. Also at C tier is going to be Lalima Metalworks. Their flashlights are definitely of good build quality, but they're a bit overpriced and they don't do anything special. However, I do very much like their clips, and if I was doing a clip ranking list, I'd probably put them at the A tier at the very least. So yeah, I think their clips are something special, but I can't say the same about their flashlights. Alright, and the next entry on this list is going to be Yellow Day Energy, I believe. I think that's what they're called. They have one flashlight called the wreck -It, and it looks exactly how it sounds in the name. So yeah, nothing special again. Now. Next in C tier is going to be CWF Design. He does make some very nice flashlights, but they're also overpriced, and at the end of the day, much of his success is predicated on the Dragon Driver, which he claims is proprietary, which it is not by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually open source code, which is why it's kind of disparaging to see him claim that people are quote unquote copying him when he sort of copied it in the first place and made some modifications to it. Also at C tier is going to have to be Lux RC. Um, you know, if we were going off of creativity and technological advancement, he would definitely be at A tier at the very least. The problem is his customer service is some of the shittiest in the industry, like by far. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a hard C tier for me. Like I've owned one of his flashlights and it is just exceptional, but no, nah, the customer service, that ain't it, Chief. Another maker that I'm sadly going to have to put at C tier is Looter. I think he only advertises on CPF, Candle Power Forums. His flashlights are pretty far behind the curve technology-wise, but he does make some very cool right angle lights. Just kind of overpriced in my opinion. Also at C tier is going to be MechForce. MechForce's Mech Torch is nothing exceptional. It's very, sh I, I very much dislike the bodily aesthetics of it, but it is packing a H17F and titanium body into a very compelling price. So that's, a, that's MechForce's one claim to fame in the custom flashlight world, I guess you could say. 
All right, so next at C tier is going to be Raylight. I wouldn't strictly consider them to be a custom flashlight maker, but they kind of walk that line between custom and mainstream flashlights. Raylight is definitely an interesting maker. I really like his stuff, honestly. There's sort of an interesting dynamic here because he hails from China. China definitely has a bad rep for copying stuff, and it sets a bad bar for him just because he's one of the few makers out of China actually doing very creative stuff, in my opinion. So you know what? I'm actually going to put Raylight at B. They're probably going to be my first B tier flashlight on here. Also at B tier is going to be, I'm going to put Vin, I think it's Vin Win. I, I hope I'm not botching his name. It's, I always forget how to say it. I'm going to put Vin and JC Customs at B tier. They don't do anything particularly special. They mostly mod um, mainstream flashlights, but they do do some creative stuff sometimes. And I think Vin is just a great guy in general for the um, flashlight community. Also at B tier is going to be Fellholter. Fellholter is one flashlight and it is called the, I think it's called the Gelato, just like all the others. So yeah, props to him for at least recognizing that his flashlight is nothing special. That being said, I do really like the look of that flashlight. And from what I've heard from my friends, the build quality is pretty much on par with his other work. So yeah, I'll throw him in B tier because of that. Also in B tier is going to be Megizmo. Um, maybe another unpopular decision here, but I really think that Megizmo has sort of fallen behind the curve in recent years. Definitely makes some very nice stuff, and I can't deny that he's made some very, very important contributions to the, um, the flashlight industry, but he's kind of taken a backseat, if you will. He's sort of like the grandfather of the um, custom flashlight world in the best, best sense possible. Also at B tier is going to be Prometheus Lights, or Dark Sucks. I don't even know, man. He's got like three names. Anyways, um, very solid design fundamentals, but I just don't like the marketing practices that he uses to sell his flashlights. Next in B tier is going to be Hanko, Hanko Machine Works. This is the resident king of custom flashlight hype. Um, his flashlights regularly go for much more than they're intrinsically worth on the custom flashlight market. And I just, I just don't understand it, man. He definitely makes some very nice stuff, very pretty stuff, but at the end of the day, nothing super exceptional in my opinion. And along those lines, we're also going to put Tim Miklos at B tier. And my rationale behind this is, oh, by the way, for those of you that don't know who Tim Miklos is, he's basically the king of custom flashlight one-offs. He does all of his work manually, but the issue here is that he's kind of inconsistent. He seems to botch every other flashlight he works on, and then he sort of has to salvage it. Nothing against him personally, he has some very, very creative designs, just eh, kind of on the fence about that. Okay, so I think we can move to A tier now. My first entry at A tier is going to be Okluma. Personally, I don't think Okluma has very creative designs, although they've definitely started to try and branch out, but they have one of the best warranties in the business, and I can't argue with that. So yeah, solid A tier because of that, and Jeff is just a great guy in general. Next at A tier is going to be HDS Systems. Their rotary flashlight has hands down one of the best user interfaces of any flashlight in the world. I also really like the principles that they design their flashlight behind and they also stand behind their work. So yeah, that's a solid A tier for me as well. Another flashlight maker that is going to go into A tier is George Kamenez. He definitely makes some very creative stuff, but I think his one claim to fame, if you will, is that he makes some of the smallest flashlights in the world. Like I think he actually has the world record for the smallest flashlight ever. That's impressive in its own right and he's just a great guy in general. So yeah, that's another A tier maker for me. Also at A tier is going to be Valeno Designs. Valeno has some very creative stuff that was priced pretty compellingly. Some of his newer stuff, the pricing is a little, is a little iffy for me. It's a little bit overpriced in my opinion, but I can't deny that he definitely made some great stuff. So he, he has a spot in the upper ranks at the very least. Also at A tier is going to be Freelux. Freelux has two designs. He has the Synergy 1 and the Synergy 2, but he's been incredibly consistent for what it's worth. And I really think this side-by-side -side format is a pretty underrated format, honestly, that I haven't seen from any other custom makers for the most part. As you might imagine, the brands remaining are going to be the S tier makers in my opinion. First, we have Matchbox Instruments. They are kind of extinct, actually. They don't actually make flashlights anymore, but they had some of the most revolutionary flashlights for the time period and have very, very compelling prices at that. So yeah, definitely an S tier brand, um, despite the fact that they pretty much no longer exist. Next to S tier is going to be Sigma Customs. Um, Sigma is one of the few custom makers that still makes their stuff by hand. While they're not exactly pushing the bracket in terms of creativity, they are just progressive enough that I consider Sigma to be an S tier um, maker. Next, I'd put Overready at S tier. 
Much of their success can actually be predicated on um, LuxRC, interestingly enough. However, I do think they make very nice stuff, and in tandem with the LuxRC drivers that they use, definitely an S-tier brand in my opinion. And finally, of course, we have Coolfall at S-tier. I can't not put them at S-tier. Um, I've never held or played with one of their flashlights, however, it's sort of just understood that they are the Ferrari, the McLaren of the custom flashlight world. There is nothing that really tops them in terms of price or in terms of function even, I think. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you would have ranked some of these brands because I'm definitely interested to know um, some other people's perspective as well. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and to subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching and peace out until next time.